What's up guys and welcome. You are watching Fazzy Fitness. So one of the most anticipated shows of the year. Daniel Pro is happening right now. The pre-judging is underway as we speak. And boy oh boy what a crazy lineup it was. All the top guys were absolutely on. Everyone brought the conditioning. The lighting on the stage was superb. And so was the streaming quality. So first of all let's talk about the biggest name on that stage. The mutant Nick Walker. Unbelievable size and unreal freak factor. So it is safe to say that the mutant has arrived. The man was on like anything. And as I kept on mentioning after this year's Pittsburgh Pro, that one week is plenty of time to find new things, to fix the issues. And that is exactly what him and Matt Jensen did. He had his trademark conditioning front to back, top to bottom. And is that really a surprise? The man has never been off. Plus, his midsection control is abs control. That was superb as well, which was being pointed out the most after this year's Pittsburgh Pro. And one thing that I noticed is that this time, when Nick Walker is in the post, his waist is looking a lot more streamlined. So let's take a look at the first call out. So what was the biggest surprise and the biggest shocker for everyone? I have to say that was Quinton Beastwood and him not even making top 5 on the first glance. So conditioning wise he looked phenomenal. He was absolutely shredded. I mean just take a look at his hamstrings and his glutes. But sadly I have to say his back shorts, they looked so weak specifically their rear last spread that even the guys outside of the top 5, even those guys were beating him from the back. I have to say great structure but still not enough size, not enough density and I think he's gonna be massively disappointed after tonight because he was actually coming for the win here. So let's see what these guys can do for the finals and how much improvements can he make from the prejudging to the finals showdown. So what did Tony Burton really prove here tonight? He's no longer the small guy in any lineup that he enters. Just look at the width of his rear lash spread. That is just unreal. Especially when he was standing next to a guy like Nick Walker. It seems like he was wider than Nick. Just take a close look at that shot and you guys will see what I'm talking about. So, Tonyo might be 220 pounds on the stage. But that just does not matter at all. Because he is so round and so bubbly and so 3D. He creates such a great illusion on the stage. His absolutely massive quad sweep. Is he one of the best x frame out there? So Tonyo's front last spread is one hell of a shot as well. And he was beating everyone in that pose as well. His conditioning was spot on. Actually he was in a better condition than the on Brazil. Definitely in the top 3 tonight. And he did gain immense respect after this amazing performance. And depending on how he shows up for the finals, he might very well be as high as top 2. So Martin Fitzwater did not make any shallow claims. He was on front to back. And he was peeled to the bone tonight absolutely superb conditioning. So when Martin was standing next to Nick Walker, it was like apples and oranges as both physiques are so damn different. Martin has better aesthetics, he has better flow, he has a smaller waist while Nick Walker on the other hand has more of a freak factor, he has more muscularity. But the fact that Martin was so much better in the aesthetics department, he was milking that like anything on the stage as he should have. Absolutely loved his confidence on the stage. And also Tony Burton's confidence as well. As neither Martin nor Tony Burton, they were once seen intimidated by the likes of Nick Walker, a guy who is top 3 in the world. These guys held their own. So massive respect for Stuart Sutherland, aka B. Sue. So many people counted him out. And he defied everyone, as he is in the solid fourth place tonight. And that I have to say is a great accomplishment, considering what kind of a lineup he was up against, considering that we have top Olympians in this lineup. Definitely an amazing performance. So the judges called four guys for the final call out for the confirmation round. Nick Walker, Martin Fitzwater, Tony Burton and of course Beef Stew. So these guys were shuffled around and at one point Nick Walker was on the side and then he was moved to the center. But I believe that was more of a gimmick, more of a trick to keep the fans more engaged, more excited. So Nick Walker did more than enough to win this show. It is after all an open bodybuilding show and it is about muscle and size. And Nick Walker is just way too good from the side as well as from the back for all of these guys. He had too much muscle over Tony Burton as well as Martin Fitzwater. His spectacle bicep is absolutely nuts. He's really one of the best in the men's open bodybuilding right now. Even his side shorts. I mean just take a look at the detail in the side of his legs. Plus the thickness he has top to bottom. That is just way too much for all of these other guys. So Nick Walker is easily leading after the prejudging tonight. And I'm gonna go as far as saying this. In my opinion, because so many people are saying that it is a close show. I don't think it is. At least not at the prejudging. But is that even a surprise? All that criticism on Nick Walker after the Pittsburgh Pro. 
And yet, everyone was picking Nick for the win tonight. But still, I have to say, both these guys, Tony Button and Martin, absolutely brought it tonight. And even though I have Nick Walker winning this show, it wasn't like a walk in the park for him. He had to bring his best. So the judges had another call out with Angel Calderon and Quentin Beastwood. These guys were compared for the fifth spot. So there might be a possibility for Quentin to move up and place top five. But again, he was top five last year at Texas Pro as well. So I have to say that is a big loss for him. So another big disappointment for Justin Rodriguez. So I'm not trying to hit on this guy, but it might be time to think about hanging up the posing trunks and maybe focus more on his health. Because at this point, it seems like it doesn't really matter who coaches him and what kind of a conditioning he brings. He just isn't standing out against the can crop of guys in the men's open bodybuilding. So what do you guys think? Is Nick Walker winning this easily? If not, who do you guys have fighting with him for the top spot? So for Classic Physique, it was a two-man show once again. The repeat of what we saw at Pressbook Pro just a week ago. Aaron Weilberger, the Pressbook Pro champion, versus Matt Grego, who plays Rarob at that show. So considering the results from the last show, unless the judging criteria has changed, I'm gonna go with Aaron here. Simply because he is just way too big, way too good from the back. And Matt Grego on the other hand, who by the way is the training partner of Mr. Olympia Derek Lesford, as good as he is from the front and from the side. He just loses too much ground in the back double bicep pose. And I have to say, Eric seems to be a bit more tighter here compared to the Pittsburgh Pro. So there is a logical reason to believe that he is gonna win here once again. The 212 class had some of the most amazing comparators, the Carrot Bajo and Oli, who were fourth and sixth at the Olympia last year. And Christian Zagarella in that lineup as well, who is like one of the most aesthetic guy in the entire 212 bodybuilding right now. So the judges put Oli and Carrot in the middle, and both these guys will not move at all, which clearly means that they are fighting for number one and number two spots. So Carrot has more flow, he has better V taper, and overall bigger structure. But I have to say, Oli looked absolutely sensational front to back, especially from the back. His conditioning was just nuts. And it is saying something that Oli was looking more conditioned than Carrot Baju. So this looks like a really close one. So is the defending champion in trouble here? So Christian Zagarella, who is the most pretty physique in this lineup, he hasn't been able to get the judges' attention, at least as of right now. His physique is extreme opposite of a guy like Oli. And if you guys remember, he lost to Ahmad Ashkenani twice in two weeks last year in the post-Olympia shows. And even then, the fans actually had him winning over Ahmad Ashkenani. But it seems like the judges are looking for more thickness, for more muscularity, which I have to say is kind of a contradiction to the winning Mr. Olympia in the 212. Because Kion is the champion now, he should be the blueprint. So it is a bit confusing what the judges are actually looking for here. But do let me know what you guys think. Who did you guys have winning in the 212? And also hit the thumbs up button if you liked the video. And smash the subscribe button if you wanna come back for more. Thanks for watching.